Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. And uh, yeah, so the first things first, I have to apologize for last week. Uh, I had every intention of making a video, but uh, due to some personal issues and scheduling issues, I basically couldn't make one. Um, if you're on my Patreon, then you will have seen the blog update that I did but uh, so some, some of the things that I'm about to talk about will be repeated because I'm basically going to summarize uh, the last two weeks. Um, but thank you for s sticking around. Um, <laughs> life, it just finds a way of getting in the way. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the Bug Accelerator pro pro program. Um, this is the Inkscape pro project uh, is basically hiring me to fix issues for the Inkscape 1.3 release. And um, I have been fixing a whole bunch of stuff. So um, first of all, uh, I fixed an issue in the flowed text for old SVG files. This is where if you had a piece of flowed text, you were no longer able to edit those, those text blocks anymore. You couldn't add uh, carriage returns to them at all. Uh, empty lines were forbidden. Um, I managed to fix that by basically re-engineering how a previous rendering fix was done. I, I backed out an older change and I put in a, I think, a more appropriate change for that old style flow box. Basically, what, what happened was is SVG 1.1 didn't have any flow text at all. SVG 1.2 had flow text. Uh, no browser supported it. So if you opened up these SVG files in a browser, you would just see an empty box. And then SVG2 had a completely different mechanism for flowed text. So Inkscape, of course, implements everything because it tries to be compatible as possible. Um, so, but, uh, so anyway, this particular fix is, is, is held up a little bit because uh, Mark who did the original fix wants it to be very well tested, which is completely understandable. You do do not want this kind of thing to basically cause more, more issues than it fixes. Um, we got to move this on because this is slow. So I fixed the uh, page bleed export in PDF. Uh, essentially now with multi-page multi uh, bleeds are set on each of the pages in, individually. The options for uh, page bleed and the size is removed from PDF, PostScript, and EPS exports. And now you have to specify them by setting them on the page themselves. Uh, I put a warning into the exports themselves so that for users that don't uh, know where the settings have gone, I've basically indicated where they need to go in order to set these things. Uh, this should mean that essentially you can have better control and more precision on uh, all of the bleeds. Especially since you can set different bleeds for different sizes and sizes. I'm, I have no idea whether that's important or not in, in production, but there you go. Uh, I fixed a bug in the Shape Builder tool that effectively meant that um, if you did nothing at all, no action, it would still cause the document to think it had been changed, uh, leading to undo problems. Uh, that's been fixed. Uh, I fixed a crash in the object to path on clones. Essentially, you would try to object to path a clone and it would die. Um, I prevent uh, pre previews from blocking the, um, the 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 loading of large documents. So essentially, say you opened up a PDF file with fifty pages, and you just happen to have the export dialog open uh, in the previous time you had Inkscape. Uh, the export dialog would block. You wouldn't see Inkscape. You wouldn't see anything. You would just be waiting, and you could be waiting for a very long time. Um, so what I did was I, I fixed the actual loading mechanisms so that it wouldn't block anymore, uh, but it would still still have freezing issues. And we'll get back to the export di dialog in a minute. Um, I replaced the uh, the pop up progress bars that happened every single time it did an export. It popped up a little progress bar that went, you know, I'm exporting, I'm exporting, exporting. Which uh, for a single export is not a pro problem, but for batch it's absolutely uh, terrible because. You do like, oh, I want to export 100 PNGs, and then you go to like browse the web or, or whatever. Each of these pop-ups would basically take focus, and you would never be able to use your computer until the entire export process had finished. Uh, no good. So instead, what I've done is I've put the, I've removed the pop-up entirely, and now it's a widget that overlays on top of the um, export net dialog that to shows you the pro pro progress. And it even shows you the progress of when you're doing a batch export, basically which file it's on and uh, which format it's doing. 
just to give you like more more output. Um, it also looks nice. Thanks to my cough for the code review there. Um, I think we managed to get a good uh, balance of what needs to be shown and how faded the back background needs to be. Um, I di I also fixed some crashing crashes in clearing pre previews in the export di di dialog, and a couple of other crashes and fi fixes uh, that were just mi minor issues. Okay, so that's all of the um, accelerator pro program issues. Let's talk about the P Patreon work. This is the stuff that you guys pay me for. Um, so first of all, thank you so much to all of my supporters who subscribe to me on pa Patreon and uh, basically pay me so that I have more time to work on Inkscape and also I get to focus on the issues that you guys need, right? Whatever you guys want. Um, so I, first of all, I, I did actually fix some issues with the website calendar um, that was causing some issues with the, uh, with the hack fest. We moved some dates around and some bugs appeared. I looked into adding a new filter API to the Inkex module for the, for extensions so that people that write extensions could make filters in a more reasonable way. Uh, that's still in draft. Jonathan has some ideas of his own. And so we're going to collaborate and figure out a good design. Uh, API design should never be underestimated. Uh, making sure that your libraries are just as easy to use as any user interface for, for the screen. Okay, uh, I fixed a particular uh, scrolling nodes issue. This is where if you hover over a node in a path and you hit the scroll wheel, instead of, instead of zooming in and out or panning across the screen, Inkscape would instead start selecting and deselecting nodes. Um, this is a feature which is very useful when you want it, but uh, a user experience issue when you don't. So uh, what I did was I added a, uh, I didn't change the default, right? The default is still uh, the scroll wheel issue, blah, blah, blah. But it's now in the modifiers preferences. So you can go into the pre preferences and basically disable it or ch change it so that you have to hold alt or control or something in order to activate it. Um, hopefully in the future, a designer will come along and, uh, instruct me on what the default should be. I think the default should probably be alt, but that's just my feeling. So there's a particular issue where, uh, if you are exporting to a format in the single export, it pops up the, the, um, extension preferences. So say you're exporting to PNG and it, it, it pops up the PNG variables, uh, and you fill them in. And then I added a chat box because this is really annoying. I added a chat chat box to say, ignore, the, like, don't pop this up. Just use whatever values I used last. Uh, and that was okay for 1.2, 1, 1 but I wanted it to be better, especially since we couldn't have that chat box for the batch export. So every single batch export popped up preferences for each of the four formats that you wanted to export to. Uh, now the... Um, there is a, it doesn't, never pops up when you, when you just export. Instead, right next to the drop, drop, drop down is a configuration button. When you press that, then it pops up. Um, and there's a whole bunch of extra code so that the settings that you set in a batch export are different and distinct from the settings that you uh, save in a single export, just per line so that you can say, for instance, have two different PNG exports in the same batch exporter. And each of those two formats can have like different bit depths or whatever other anti-aliasing or, or whatever. Um, this is not the final form that this design will take. I think there's probably going to be some interesting stuff with like saving for formats and stuff, but it's definitely on the way of reform. Uh, certainly better than just popping stuff up all, all the time. Okay, so this is like the biggest piece of work <clears throat> and partially one of the reasons why I was in trouble last week making a video because I was just locked in a battle trying to fix the export di dialogue. So you remember how previously uh, I said that I fixed the bug uh, where the export dialogue would, would freeze. No, well, it would block and then you wouldn't see the user interface. I fixed that, but it would still freeze. And this is because generating pre previews was just incredibly expensive. And we added new functionality into the single export and to the batch export where you can see multiple pages at the same time. It's very good design, but the user experience is bad if the preview generation is broken. So um, what I had to do is I had to pull out 
a piece of work that P PBS did to asynchronously generate the um, pre previews. That worked fine, but the problem is it caused a lot of issues uh, because the, the generating of the document, um, it's a complicated inter internal ba baseball situation, but um, each of the previews had a copy of the document that it was displaying. Uh, each of those documents took time to generate and memory. Um, so what I did was I reformatted it all so that the, uh, the, the all of the previews share the same document. Um, so es essentially all of the uh, pre preview code had to be um, redone. And um, I'm happy to report that after some... Um, Try, like I, I created a couple of different prototypes of like ways that it could be done. PBS helped an awful lot in re reviewing it and giving me some advice on the best ways to construct it. And I managed to make it sort of, it's not quite asynchronous, but it, it doesn't block the main, main, main loop, uh, which basically means that the graphic user interface doesn't freeze. And also you, if you've got a very large uh, graphic or a very large um, document with lots of pages, each of the previews that it tries to generate will generate one after another. So it doesn't basically block until it's generated them all, for example. Okay, uh, I also did fix a bunch of other cra crashes and some other things in the export dialog because as I was te testing it, I found a bunch of stuff. Okay, so that's um, my work this week. Let's have a look at some of the, the interesting work that's been going on in Inkscape. These, these are features and fixes and other contributions to Inkscape that I didn't do. Uh, first of all, I wanted to highlight Mykov's work. He has been um, pretty active re recently, uh, but one of the, the features that I thought was really impressive was that he uh, had a problem with the, the node deletion uh, where it would try and retain the shape of the object when you deleted nodes. And so what Mykov did was um, he basically took the algorithm from another free software pro project. He took it from FontForge. And apart from a small licensing issue, which was resolved, um, he managed to integrate it into Inkscape such that um, instead of Inkscape having, you know, either no uh, retention of the shape or terrible retention of the shape, there's now a much better algorithm that should be able to um, keep uh, your shape better. It's never going to be per perfect. It's mathematically impossible for it to retain the shape when you delete nodes, but it should at least be comparable, I would say. Um, now, I may mispronounce this name. Uh, Sanhita uh, fixed an issue with the with the export di di dialog where the pages weren't so sorted. Um, they basically sorted them as page num number by, by default. This should allow exporting more, more reasonably. Um, Adam Bellis has added a whole bunch of new patterns in, into Inkscape, um, which should be cool. PBS added the flatten operation from the shape builder. The original shape builder pro project had a path operator, um, you know, path cut, path division. There's a new one, path flatten. And it uses the shape builder technology in order to basically cut out all of the non-overlapping parts of a shape. This can be very, very useful for things like cutting and uh, vinyl work and stuff, stuff, stuff like that. Um, uh, so it's actually Saturday now, and I'll be flying to Germany tomorrow to meet many of these developers. Next week is the Hackfest, so the next video that you see from me will actually be from the Hackfest. And I will be, uh, hopefully, no guarantees, interviewing the other developers, seeing what they've been getting up to, seeing how they got into Inkscape, etc. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it gets on. I don't know how many uh, like bugs and features and stuff I'll be able to to work on, um, but uh, you know, whatever whatever happens, I'll keep keep you guys up to date. Um, but thank you very much for jo joining me, and uh, I'll see you all next week.